Good morning, beloved. We're so glad that you have joined us here on this morning. See, you had an opportunity that God touched you and woke you up this morning. And it ain't that good news to be here worshiping God on this day. Today we're going to have our scripture reading is going to be coming from Sister Veronica Moon Gray. And then we have our, our choir will be leading us in song and we're so grateful for that. But today's message is going to be coming from 1 John chapter 5, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. That's 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. And, and the theme is... Can we just be honest? Can we be honest on today? Once again, we thank you for being part of this worship experience. Continue to worship God at this appointed time, this appointed hour, because he woke you up this morning. Amen. Good morning, Lomax Temple. As I greet you, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ this morning. This first Sunday in the third month of this calendar year, March the 7th, as we come to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, I greet you. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the epistle of St. John of first John the first chapter the new living translation and I will begin reading at the fifth verse this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you God is light and there is no darkness in him at all so we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Oh, that is God's word for God's people. Let us pray. As we remember the family of the Reverend George Stewart this morning, the Palm family, and for all of those who are going through. Whatever the situation, whatever the condition, we lift up our hearts, we lift up our minds, we lift up our thoughts to the one who has made the difference in our lives, the one who gives us comfort, the one who loves us beyond measure. He is always with us because he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Let us pray. Oh, how excellent is your name. In all the earth, how excellent is your name. Father, we come before you this morning giving you praise, giving you honor, and giving you thanks this morning, Lord, for waking us with a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. We thank you this morning for being with us, Lord God, as we go throughout our day, as we go through our trials and tribulations. You said, be of good cheer. You have overcome the world. So no matter what comes, pandemic, lack, sickness, or death, we trust in you. We thank you, Lord God, that we know the truth because your word is true. Your son is the truth. And we walk in your light, your light that guides us, that empowers us, that gives us clear understanding, Lord God. 
So help us to study, to show ourselves approved unto you. We are workmen who need not be ashamed because we rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you for the truth, Lord. You are the truth and the living God. So we are children who want to walk in your light, who want to speak your word, which is truth, is light. Thank you, Lord. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Your word always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. As we go forward, we thank you for blessing our pastor, for empowering our pastor, for giving our pastor illumination to lead us, to guide us, and to exalt you in everything that happens here at this temple, Lomax Temple. We bless you, Lord. We praise you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank God. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm Zion, and these are your weekly announcements. Happy birthday to our March calendar participants. Happy birthday. On Saturday, March 13th at 10 a.m. from 1 p.m., the Marriage Ministry presents War for Your Marriage. Facilitators Brother Mark Bryant and Sister Sherry Bryant. Saturday, March 13th at 3 p.m., Reverend Sandra James will facilitate a grief workshop on and all are welcome. Every Wednesday at noon and 6 p.m., join us for our Bible study via Zoom. Please visit LomaxTemple.org for more information. These are your weekly announcements. Thank you.
Good morning, beloved. We're so glad that you have joined us and being part of this worship experience. As you coming to us via Facebook, we thank you for pausing. We know that you can scroll and quickly go to something else, but I, I know that God has a word for you on the day. Don't scroll too quickly because God wants to bless you with a word on, on today. If you're going through and then YouTube popped up, please, I encourage you to, to stay on because God truly does have a word for you on this day. And we thank you for being part of this service. My name is Reverend Ori Peterson. I'm the pastor here at Lomax Temple AME Zion Church, and, and we're grateful for you being here. And I just want to let you know that this church is all about trying to do its very best, so blessing God's people. And we're grateful that we can be on the giving end versus on the receiving end. On the giving end, that means you can bless God's people because God has been so good unto you. And we do that through our pantry. We give to those people and making sure that we're blessing individuals each and every last week. And we make sure that we're blessing in, in the prison ministry and through the jail ministry. And we're grateful to be able to just to give back because God has truly been so good to, um, to us. But we encourage you to also take part in this ministry of blessing God's people. With our pantry ministry, this is our pantry Sunday. And, and, and I encourage you to sow a seed into our pantry there because 100% of what you give goes back unto blessing this pantry and what it can do for this kingdom. And then I also encourage you to continue to give your tithes and your offering at this time. Amen. But that's, I want you to be part of this, this kingdom building and blessing God's people. And like I say before, there is truly a word for you on, on this day. And I want us to turn to 1 John chapter 1, looking at verse number 8. That's 1 John chapter 1, looking at verse number 8. 1 John is a small Bible, small book. So you might fly by it in the New Testament. I'm not talking about John. I'm talking about one John, first John. That's the one we need to look at. And you can look at the table of contents. You could take a moment to look at there in the beginning of your Bible and then it'll tell you appropriately what page it begins on. And if you're using your phone, of course, you can look in at your, your index and find out where first John is. But it's first John chapter one, looking at verse eight. It says, if we claim, and it's the NLT, if, you, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. If we claim we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. Today's topic is can we just be honest? See, see, in the church, when we had church open, sometimes the pastor would turn, ask you to turn to your neighbor, to your left and to your right, and ask a question. See, sometimes people will put up facades and, and make it seem as they're doing more than what they really are. They are asked at times to ask and respond to a question that at times, even when they are in church, they lie to each other. But can we just be honest on today? While you're watching on your, your phone, while you're watching on your tablet, while you're watching on your computer, or if you're watching on your smart TV, can we just be honest with ourselves? Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace, oh God. Oh God, I pray right now and lift myself up to thee, oh God. Lord, give me words to say to your wonderful people. God, we know that your word has life, liberty, salvation, redemption, everything that we need. 
Oh God, then I pray for your people that they will have ears to hear, hearts to receive, and mind, hands, and feet to do what thus says you, O oh God. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart truly be acceptable unto thee, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. The question is, can we just be honest with ourselves? See, since this pandemic, many people have found themselves spending less time with God than they've done in the past. And then some are turning around and spending more time with God. But those who are not spending time in his word, not spending time in prayer, often at times makes excuses to why they're not doing. But can we just be honest with each other on today? Not comparing ourselves to who we think are not good, but really taking a hard look at ourselves. See, God wants us to be better than what we are right now. But if we keep on comparing ourselves to folks we think are less than us, we won't have a sense of urgency in order to do better and to become better to what God has for us. See, we'll keep on making excuses. We'll keep on telling God, it's, don't you know it's my heart? We'll keep on making all kinds of excuses saying God knows my heart. But we need to understand that God wants us to become better and to walk better. In, and we do that by being with him. Beloved, I'm not here to beat anyone up. Just, I want to make sure that that is clear. This is not about trying to destroy, trying to beat you down, trying to tell you all the wrongs that we are. But it's also trying to make us take a good look at ourselves in order that we may be able to turn and to repent and to respond to what God is asking us to do. See, when we begin to think that we got it all together, when we begin to think that we are above sin, that's a dangerous place to be. The word of God tells us, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself in sober judgment and according to the faith of God. See, God is trying to get us to understand when we get so caught up in our own self, think that we got it all together, keep pointing fingers at who else is jacked up, we begin to think too high of ourselves. Not that we don't need to have confidence. God is not saying that because he wants us to walk in a state of confidence as it relates to having confidence in him. But we cannot have confidence in our own power, our own might, our own strength, and act as though we have everything in control. The word tells us that we got to begin to trust in God's word. We got to trust in what he's saying and what, not what folks are saying, not what I am saying, but what God is saying. When we look at verse number five, and we're going to go back, we have to trust in what God is saying. It says in verse number five, it says, this is the message we have heard from him. And we declare it to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. Can we just be honest with ourselves and say, I'm going to trust in the word of God? Can we just say, I'm going to trust in God's word? Say, God give us a word that we can trust in. See, Jesus says to them that, that, that he is, he tells them that he is the light and there is no darkness in him. God is light. God is light, but light is not God. God is powerful. God is sovereign. God is holy. God is the lily of the valley. God is the bright 
and morning star. While we look at those things and begin to realize that God is light, we need to also understand that light is not God because otherwise we will find ourselves worshiping the sun. We will find ourselves worshiping the moon. We will find ourselves worshiping a flashlight. But God is everything that we need for he is light unto us. See, this kind of light lets us know and guides us in the midst of our darkest moments. He is the one who is able to lead us just like he led the Israelites in the midst of their darkness. He was a pillar of fire by day that he was able to guide them to their promised land. See, Jesus reminds us that he is the light of the world, that in him there is no darkness. He's the one that changes us. He's the one that directs us. He's the one that corrects us. He's the one who makes everything that we are able to do when we begin to look onto him. There is no darkness in God. He illuminates love. He illuminates knowledge. He illuminates wisdom. He illuminates hope and understanding because he's everything that we need. See, we need to understand that God is light. He's trying to reveal himself. He's trying to let you know he has everything that you need. He's trying to let you know in me there's always transparency. He's trying to let you know he's not trying to hide anything from you. He's trying to let you know that he has everything for you. He's not trying to keep it in the darkness. He's not trying to keep it in a dark place. He's trying to reveal everything in order that we all may walk according to his ways. See, the word tells us there's no good thing withheld from us for God, for God. How much more when we look at God's word because he talks about these good gifts that he will give us. See, God is always open. He's never hiding things. But Satan is always trying to pervert the word of God. He's always trying to work in the midst of darkness. He's always trying to hide something from us. But don't you know God is trying to get us to understand who he is, what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. It's nothing that he is going to hide from us. See, and we need to know that because he is light, <laughs> we need to know that we can't hide nothing from God. Just like he's light, he's not trying to hide anything from us. Because he is light and there is no darkness in him, don't you know that there's nothing that we can hide from him. There's nothing. We can't deceive him. We can't trick him. We can't betray him. We can't mislead him. We can't con God. We can't swindle God. See, on First Sundays, and we thank you for, be, for being part of First Sundays. See, it's been a long time since we have taken communion. And the goal is this next, uh, uh, next month on April, we want to do communion on our first Sunday. And that's Resurrection Sunday. But don't you remember our, the things we would say we, before we took communion? On first Sundays, we'd say, Almighty God, unto whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and to whom no secret is hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy glorious name through Jesus Christ. See, we need to understand that all hearts, our, our heart is open. All of our desires is known and there is no secret that's hidden from him. Can we just be honest with ourselves and say, I will trust in what God's word is trying to tell each and every last one of us? Can we trust in God and know that we can lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we can acknowledge who he is? Can we just lean up, know that we can just trust in God's word? And as someone, it reminds us that we can be like the we could be like the one who when we meditate on the word both night and day then then we could be like the tree planted by the rivers of water and everything that we do will prosper can we just be honest with ourselves and trust in what god word is telling us and secondly how can 
Can we be honest with ourselves? And secondly, how can we live any kind of way? When we look at this word, it's trying to explain to us, we just can't live any kind of way. I, I, I know the world, because the world is doing some of everything and anything and, and considering and making excuses to why it's right. Don't you know that when you are called by Christ, that when you give your life to Christ, you just can't live any kind of way? I'm, once again, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not trying to cause any confusion. But God tells us when we begin to walk in the light that God has for us, don't you know things begin to turn? around God is trying to remind us we just can't live any kind of way see this word tells us that if we claim to have fellowship with him that's Christ and yet walk in darkness we lie and do not live out the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light here's what happens we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ, his son, purifies us from all sins. See, he begins to do a work within us. We have fellowship with one another. We just can't live any kind of way. And if we think we can live any kind of way, this says we just lie and do not live the truth. But when we claim that we are Christians, we got to begin to look as though and walk as though we are Christ-like. We got to be ones who are walking and believing and trusting in God. See, we got to believe in Christ. But hear me now, that's believing just ain't enough because you need to understand those other religions believe in Jesus Christ as well. Muslims believe in Jesus Christ. Buddhists, Jews, Hindus, and some atheists believe in Jesus. Oh, they believe that he lived. They believe that he was crucified. But just believing in Jesus is not enough. Believing in him is not enough. And I know we can read the word and the word tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we take that word, God so loved the world that whoever believes. See that word in the Greek word is pastool, pastool, which means that we, we believe that it's true, that he, he is the living son of God. We believe that it's true. We, we have Christian faith. That means we put our saving faith in him. We, it says that, that we believe that, guess what? We believe that he died for our sins. And the only way we can be saved is to put our trust in him. We are firmly persuaded. We believe. We rest upon and trust in what the word of God is saying about our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are not wavering from it. We are trusting in it. We are wholeheartedly knowing that it is him and him alone is because we are saved. We just don't believe that he was, was, was born. We just don't believe that he died, but we believe that he is the Savior of this whole world. See, the word tells us that when we put our trust in him, we don't walk around in darkness. We don't walk around just keep lying about the truth. We begin to choose to want to be more like Christ. We begin to choose to want to not walk in our sinful way anymore. See, this is not about me slipping and having sin. This, that's not what I'm saying because we all are sinners and we all are saved by grace. We all are ones who are falling short of the glory of God. Each and every last one of us are sinners. Don't, don't, don't think none of us are not. Every last one of us will fall short, will slip from time to time, we are say things, do things that we shouldn't do according to the word of God. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those individuals who know stuff is wrong, but still yet choose to do it. You know that it's going contrary to what God is asking you to do, but yet you say, I'm going to go that way anyway. Why? Because I love doing what it is I like doing. 
See, when we begin to put our life and our trust in Christ, the, the word tells us that therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed and the new has come. Don't you know when we give our lives to Christ, he begins to do a new work in us. He begins to cleanse some things off us. He begins to make us a new person. Yet I'm still Ori, but there's some sin I will begin to not have a thirst for. A sin that some places I do not want to go anymore. Why? Because I put my loving faith, my trusting faith in a Christ and now he begins to do a new work in me. See, when we look at Ephesians and 4, it says to put off your old selves, which belongs to your former manner of life and corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on a new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Oh, God begins to take off some old stuff, some dark stuff, and begins to do some new things in my heart. Oh, he begins to turn me around when I begin to put my faith in him. See, we got to believe that he's able to do what God has stated he is able to do. See, when we're claiming to be Christians, we have to have a desire to do better than where we are at right now. We have to have a desire to want to be closer to God. We have to have a desire to want to read his word. We have to have a desire to love the unlovable. We have to have a desire to make sure we're working it out with our spouses. We have to have a desire to go and reach those who are lost. We have to have a desire to know that it is him who's able to keep us from stumbling and knowing that it is him alone and we want to do better in the midst of our lives. Can we just be honest with ourselves? We just can't live any kind of way. Can we just be honest with ourselves and know that we have to stop lying to ourselves? See, when we look at verse number eight, we read that over. We got to stop lying to ourselves. Verse eight says that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and trust is not in us. And then it jumps down to verse 10. It says, if we claim we have not sin, we make him out, that's God, to be a liar and the word is not in us. This is just telling us this. Let me make it plain. This is telling us this. When we look at if we claim to be without sin, we, de we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we claim to we are not sin and it makes us out to be a liar and the word is not in us. Can we just be honest? This word is telling us either we lying or God's lying. Either, either, either we lying or God's lying. When, when we say we are without sin, we are doing everything right. Matter of fact, I'm a good person. When we begin to go down and travel down that road of talking about how good we are, we make God out to be a liar and the truth is not in us. We need to understand that either we are lying or we're saying God is, is lying. But, but do y'all mind if we just look at the, at the record, look at our records compared to God's record? Can, can we just do that? Can we just be honest for a moment? Can we be honest with one another? I, you don't have to look to your neighbor. You don't have to look to the right. You don't have to ask them any question. It's just you and I. And matter of fact, you might be your only one that's in your room. And as a matter of fact, if your wife or your spouse is right there, I advise you just answer the questions in your own head. Do we lie? Oh, oh, let me check in the record of myself. Oh, I, I, I guess I can say I lie sometimes. I, I tell white lies. I, I tell small lies. But do you lie? Do we cheat? I don't, I don't cheat nobody. And, but do you cheat 
your job, your workplace out of the time. When the workplace say you need to work eight hours, but you keep taking about another 10 minute breaks. You keep doing other things on your phone. You keep looking at other stuff online versus on shopping online while you at work and you should be working. Don't you know that you're stealing time from your workplace? Are we, are we at times mean or short or abrasive? I'm just checking the record of you and I. I'm just checking the record. Can we just be honest for a minute? Do we get mean and short with people when we shouldn't be short with people? Have you turned around and say, I don't even know why I was so mean or so abrasive to folks. See, that's the thing that God is trying to get us to understand that at those moments we can be wishy-washy. At those moments we can be self-centered. At those moments we can choose some bad things path at those moments we can choose some bad friends or some bad mates at those moments when we look and be honest with ourselves oh we can be stubborn at those moments we if we just being honest with you and I don't you know that we don't always want to follow God's way but we want to follow our way don't you know if we just be honest with ourselves we don't always feel like reading God's word we don't always feel like praying don't you know that we don't always feeling like giving our time, our talent, or our treasure when it comes back unto God. See, when we look at our records, truth be told, we realize that the word is true. We, we cannot say that we are without sin. Oh, but when we look at God's word, when we look at God's record, we begin to understand that God is a man that he shall not lie. When we look at God's record, oh, he's one who's always is good. When we look at God's record, we will realize that he's faithful and he keeps his covenant and his steadfast love for a thousand generations. Oh, when we look at God's word, we see that God is one who is faithful. He won't tempt us beyond what our ability is. And if that uh, uh, temptation comes, he always give us an exit that we may be able to get out of the circumstance that we have found ourselves in or oh, when we look at God's work record we'll begin to realize that God is merciful that God is gracious that God is slow to anger and he's abounding in love and faithfulness or oh, when we look at God's record we will realize that he is one who will never leave us nor will he ever forsake us or oh, when we look at God's record we will realize that he's one that is our helper he's the one who continues to rescue us in the midst of the Things that we find ourselves in or oh, when we look at God's record then we can realize I can look to the hills from which my help comes from when I look at God's record I know that he's the one that can bless me he's the one that can save me when I look at God's record I realize that he's a God that never sleep nor slumber when I look at God's record I realize that he is a keeper he is the one who's put shade over me in the midst of some fiery suns. Oh, when I look at God's record, I realize that he's my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Oh, when I look at God's record, I realize that the Lord is my stronghold of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Oh, when I look at God's record, I realize the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, he make me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, he helps me in the midst of of the water he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's second sake oh when i look at god's record i realize ain't nothing too hard for my god oh we got to be honest with ourselves we have to be honest with ourselves we need to know that the message that God gives to us in his word is one that can transform change develop increase improve um, redeem our lives oh so we have to trust in his word oh when we look 
and try to be honest with ourselves, we have to realize I, I can't live any kind of way because God requirements, his expectations is higher and God wants me to live up to his expectation. Oh, I know you're looking at me kind of strange, but don't you know that the word of God tells us that we want to, he wants us to be holy just as he is holy? He understands that we can't quite make it up there. But when we strive not to live any kind kind of way. God is saying where you fall at when you're trusting in me, when you're not quite there, but you fall right about there. He says that moment, that spot right there, I feel it with grace. See, we got to stop lying to ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. And fourthly, we have to realize that God can rescue us. God can rescue both you and I, every last one of us. Look at verse number nine with me. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we confess See, it's right here that every week, hear me now, if you're still with me, hear me now, then don't go. Because this is the spot where folks leave. This right here is where folks walk out on many of the services. It's when God is asking you to respond to him. See, this says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all wickedness, if we confess our sins. See, this ain't the time to run off to TikTok right now. This ain't the time to go to another Facebook page. This is it's not the time to go check and see if the food is ready. This is the time to begin to be honest with yourself. See, if we can be honest, with ourselves. We, we realize that God is faithful. If we can be honest with ourselves, we realize that God would not lie to us. If we can be honest with ourselves, we realize that God is one who would never leave and forsake us. If we can be honest with ourselves, we realize that God is, is compassionate. He, he's, he's slow in anger and he is abounding in love. If we can be honest with ourselves, we know that our God is a redeemer. We know that God is one who restores us. We know that God is one who forgives us if we can be honest with ourselves we we'll realize that Jesus is the same yesterday today and forevermore if we can be honest with ourselves we'll know that God is one who's able to take and cleanse us from all wickedness when we look at this verse 9 is we need to know that God when we when we come to him and put our hearts and and our minds in his hand when we say that Lord it is me it is me his me oh Lord standing in your need of your salvation, it's me who can turn, that's you, that you can turn things around. So wash me with hyssop and I will be white. He's encouraging us to remind us that it is him who's able to turn these things around. See, we need to understand that God is trying to do a new thing in each and every last one of us. He calls out to each and every last sinner. See, this says that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. See, if anybody sins, we realize that we have an advocate with the Father. That's through, through Jesus Christ. He's a atoning sacrifice for each and every. That atoning means that he's the one who fills in. He's the one covers. He's the one who takes your place for sin. See, God is just. Now, we know that, guess what, he forgives us our sin, but when we look at this word, it says he is just. It says he, if we confess our sin, he's faithful. It means he, he's going to trust us. He, we can trust in everything in God. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's, he's not going to go against his word. It's, it's not that he's going to get so angry with you that you, when you come back to him, he, he's going to say, I, I don't like you no more. I'm, I'm done with you. I, I tried a few times, but you still didn't want to get it right. He says he's faithful as it relates to you. 
and I. He's, he's faithful. He's not going to go against his word. He, he's faithful. Then he begins to clean us up. But we need to hear the word that God is just. We need to understand that God is, is just. He, he, he loves us. He's compassionate. He, he shows us favor. He, he blesses us. He, he keeps us. But God is just. That means he also has a judicial system. In a judicial system, there is penalties for doing wrong. See, see, God is faithful. God cleanses. God redeems. God restores. God loves. But God is just. Hear me now. I, I need you to understand that when there's a crime, that, that there must be a penalty for the crime that each and every last one of us has done. See, Jesus is telling us this. He's saying, he, let me grab this. Let me see if I can grab this for a quick second. This right here, we'll say that this is you and I. And, and, and just say we're standing before a supreme God who is faithful and just and forgives, and redeems, and restores, because he's compassionate. But, but this is you and I, and, and all the things I talked about before, it says that if we say that we are not a sinner, we, we, we're lying. We, we, either we're lying or God lying, and here's the thing, I'm, I'm trusting, and I can't even trust in my own self, because sometimes I tell my own self lies. So the thing about it, because of the things that I've done, because of the things that I thought, because of the things that I said, it makes me put it in a place that because God is just, the word says, what happens is you deserve to die. Let that simmer for a second. Because of all the stuff we've done, because God is just, he's, he's just, he, he, because of who he is in his word, he can't go against his word because he's faithful. We need to understand he's, he's one who will not lie. He can't go against his word. He don't have any favorites, but what he does have is his word. And when we begin to go against his word, it puts us in a place that God has to take us and destroy us. But here's what Jesus says. He, he says, guess what? He said, I, I, I know that, that they've they done wrong. I, I understand that they've done wrong and they deserve to die. But Jesus says, guess what? I, I take their place. All the things that I have been so good. See, because Jesus never sinned, ever. Because he's never sinned, he, the Father looks upon him and realizes that he had not sinned. So he is the only one truthfully that could be it back to Kevin but because God loved each and every last one of us and he sends his son and his son has this love for us as well he says guess what I I take off all my righteousness I know I know I know what you've done I, I know what you've done but Jesus is saying I take off all my righteousness every bit of it and I will cover you with my righteousness. See, Jesus is saying, I, I take off all my righteousness and cover them with my righteousness. But because I'm covering them, I will stand in the place for them. I will stand, I will be beaten, I will be, I would, I would be, have my, my beard torn out, I would be punched, I would be spat upon, I would be stabbed in the side, I would have all these things happening unto me because I love them so much that I'm willing to stand before an all-supreme God, I'm willing to stand be before the Father and cover them with righteousness because they say that they would put their saving faith in me, they say that they would trust in me, that they say that they knew that I was the one that had came to 
redeem them from their sin. They say, when we put our saving faith in God, don't you know that it is him who covers us with righteousness? It's him who saves each and every last one of us. So when we get to the place of knowing that he has covered us, that he has redeemed us, that he has turned our lives around, oh, it's easy for you and I to begin to shout hallelujah. It's easy for you and I to begin to think of all the goodness that God has done in our lives. Oh, when we think about him covering us, when we think about him saying that, guess what, in my kingdom, there are many matches, and if I, wouldn't, if I wouldn't have told you if it wouldn't be so, but I'm going to a place that I have prepared for you. Don't you know that you're coming there too? Don't you know that I'm going to be right there with you? But even before you get to where I am, don't you know that I'm going to be with you? I'm going to be with you because I will be the kind of God who will never leave nor forsake you. Oh, I'm the kind of God that reminds you that I will give you life and that more abundantly. I'm the kind of God that you begin to put your trust in me I can turn some things around oh you might be walking through the wilderness you might be walking through the shadow of death but don't you know that he's right there with you he's on the right and the left his grace and his mercy continues to be with you all the days of your life continue to bless you all the midst of your moments don't you know that he's right there with you and matter of fact he's covered you already good word of God says oh if we put our trust in him put our saving faith in him. See, this is for you as well. You and I, every last one of us, we have to understand that we don't have it all together. And don't let people tell you about what you did or what, how jacked up you are. See, the word of God tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of it. And then he begins to clean us up, begin to perfect our lives, begin to turn us all around. See, the world looks at you in one way. Oh, but God looks at you as his child. And because you are his child, Oh, the judicial system treats you a certain way, but the parental system treats you a little different. Oh, when you mess up when your parents, they still love you. When you slip and fall, they still wipe you up. See, he's saying you are no longer in the judicial system when you give my life, your life to me. You're in the parental system because I'm going to correct you. I'm going to wash you up. I'm going to cleanse you up. Even when you fall down, when you slip, I'm still going to be right there with you because you're in the parental system because now you have a father, you have a son, you have a big brother, you have the Holy Spirit that's continuing to work in you, turning your life around and if this is you and you haven't given your life to Christ and you can do that at this very moment knowing that he's going to cover you he's going to protect you he's going to be right there with you oh he's turning some things around in the midst of your life right now and you can trust him in the midst of it in the midst of your wilderness experience you can trust in him and if this is you and you decided to give your life to Christ at this moment, I encourage you to put your name in in order that we may pray with and for you. And here's the other thing. Not only does God want you to give your life to him, but he wants to continue to perfect you and to cleanse. And the only way you could do that is by getting in his word. And we encourage you to be part of our, our Bible studies on Wednesdays and part of our Sunday school on Sunday mornings because God wants to not only just save you, he wants you to have a life that you know who he is, that you know that you can begin to walk in his, his record. Don't you know that God has a plan for you, a plan to prosper you and not to cause you harm, a plan for your hope and for your future? But you won't know the plan unless you get into his word. And so we encourage you to be part of those services. Because we want you to have the full armor of God on as you walk through this life. And for those who realize, guess what, I can just do better in you, God. I, I slipped, I could do better, and, and I need you. I encourage you to rededicate your life back to God. He knows where you're at. He knows exactly where you're at. 
And he wants to begin to mold the shape to bring you closer to him. And I encourage you too, because some of us that are going to church and being part of this on Sunday, but don't you know God wants more than you than this, this, this Sunday, this 11 a.m. service? He wants you to be part of the, the Bible study. He wants you to be part of reading his word throughout the week. He wants you to be part of taking time out and praying. He wants you to be part of Sunday school in order to equip you with the challenges that the enemy is trying to throw your way. And I encourage you to rededicate yourself back to God. And he's right there waiting for you. And if you want to be a virtual member of this church, we encourage you to be part. And let us know you want to be part of a virtual member, that you haven't found a church home, you want not sure, but you want to be part of this celebration, that we're coming together, continue to do the work of God. We encourage you to put your name in as well, because we want to call, talk with you. We thank you for joining. We thank you for being part of this service. And may God continue to bless and to keep you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you're still right here with us. And this is an opportunity for you to give back to God because he's been so good to each and every last one of us. You can sow into this ministry because we are about doing God's kingdom work here at Lomax Temple. Today we have our pantry offering and if you want to give to our pantry, we want you to put that on there with regards to the pantry because right now you need to understand that employment rate is for the nation is around 6%, but for Detroit it's around 10%. And that means there's a lot of people that's in need and we need and encourage you to sow a seed into this, this kingdom right here. And you can bless us and we can turn around and bless other individuals. As you give to the pantry, we want you to continue to give your tithes and your offering and we're grateful for all those who have done just that. But when you give to the pantry, 100% goes back to blessing the people within this neighborhood. So we encourage you to give and we're grateful for your gift. And you can give by the following means, by PayPal, Givelify, and also Cash App. Or you can mail your check right here to us at 17441 DeQuinter Street at Detroit, Michigan, 48212. And we thank you for all that you are doing. We thank you for pouring in a seed and blessing this ministry that we too can turn around and bless God's people. It's a great thing to bless God's people. And we thank you for partnering with us to do such a thing. And as we begin to, you're giving your gifts and punching that in, and we thank you for you just pausing. Don't, don't rush it, pausing into giving. Give what your hearts desire, because God loves a cheerful giver. And I believe God will turn around and bless you in a multitude when we're able to do what God has called us to do and as we leave this know that we got to be honest with ourselves understanding that when we are honest take a look a whole heart look at ourselves and be grateful for God's covering in our lives if it wasn't for the goodness of God where would we be and as we depart here the benediction is a blessing until we come back here again. And may the peace of God continue to be with you, to bless and to keep you. And you're going out and you're coming back. Through the love of our Lord, through the one and only Savior, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May he bless and keep you. And let the people of God say, Amen, Amen, and Amen.